So I know it's been a while since my last video. Things have been like kind of busy, mostly with my job, but also because I've like kind of gotten into DJing a little bit. So recently I managed to actually DJ my first two events. I did one event back in March called Halloween in March, which was like in DC. It was sort of like a variety thing. You had two bands playing, drag performer and DJs. And I was one of the DJs. So I played like some death rock, car punk, some Halloween favorites and everything. It was kind of like a really fun night. And I also got to do a guest spot recently at a club in DC called Vanguard. So I got to DJ as like the guest DJ. I actually got to be in like a nice booth and everything. There was even in the band Cliff and Ivy playing before. So it was like really exciting. And those two actually went well. I also actually recently auditioned for like a big deal to me kind of band, like well-established artists from back in the 90s. I'm not going to say who. I probably didn't get it, but I think it's at least exciting to like give it my, my best shot. So yeah, what I'm going to do with today's video, because I was thinking since I've been like getting involved in a lot of stuff is kind of make a list of like five things pretty much anyone can do to get like more involved in their local scene and help out a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is kind of like spread the word about events. So I know a lot of these club nights and stuff, they got like official promoters, they got people posting them usually on Facebook, but they, they can't like post it everywhere where every possible person could ask. I've already mentioned like in previous videos how people will ask like online, like on, um, Reddit, Discord, etc. Where are the goth events at or where are the industrial events at? And being the person who can just go up and let people know about what's going on can like actually do and be a really big help. Same thing actually even in real life, you see someone who's curious, let them know about it. Like one of the reasons why I first started going back to events after like the original first two times I never went back to is because there's this guy who would just like go up and say, hey, you need to go to night X in DC and like did it multiple times. Other people would say, Hey, you need to go to this. You need to go to that. And it eventually convinced me and I went to it. And then that kind of snowballed into me, like going out all the time. So yeah, it's not just like on the internet, even spread the word out in real life, spread the word to your friends, let people know about it. Cause it can be like hard to get reach and let people know about things nowadays. Cause although sometimes you can like flyer up places like, universities are probably still a good place to fly her up. It's kind of like hard to like get the word out because everything's so decentralized. Everyone's on the internet. So like volunteering, it doesn't even like take a lot of time either. Just volunteering like 30 seconds, few minutes out of your time to like give a boost to like your favorite events or like anything else that is going on that people might know about can like do a lot of good. Second thing I'm going to suggest is welcoming new people. So this is something I like kind of do a lot myself too. Like, so I see someone who might be a new face and if I'm feeling particularly brave, cause like a lot of times I'm pretty anxious in real life, like a lot of people. But when, I, if I'm feeling up to it, if I see someone new, I might like introduce myself, like start up a little conversation, maybe about like club, what's going on. I do my like whole welcome to the scenes spiel where I was like, Hey, here's event X, Y, and Z. There's like plenty of other stuff you can go to. And usually I can like get people like more interested. Like I let people know about events and sometimes even if they don't go back to the one they're at, they try out something else and maybe they like that one better. Or sometimes I like try and like get some information a little bit like, okay, what are the new people interested in? What do they want? How can we like help out to cater to people who might be coming in for their very first time? And also it even kind of pays off a little bit because it's, it's a good way to make friends. Like. I made quite a few close friends just for random people. I just started talking to because they like seemed new and like, oh, let me introduce you to this. And then we just like started hanging out a lot. So number three, this is like an underrated one that's kind of important is try and keep an eye out for the safety of other attendees. Make sure everyone's okay. I mean, like don't be like up in people's faces or whatever, but if you see it looks like someone's bothering someone and if you feel like you can like kind of like diffuse the situation, do so or if like someone looks like they're about to like trip over or something like help them up off the floor or something because i know like sometimes people get too drunk sometimes they're like uh, and like being able to like help people out is good 
I make sure you're like checking out for, we check out for everyone else's safety. Like if someone leaves a drink unattended, it might be good to just like keep an eye on it, make sure no one's messing with it. Because sadly, you you think people who like go out to goth clubs a lot would know not to leave their drinks unattended, but unfortunately it happens quite a bit. So it's good to keep an eye on stuff. Just make sure no one's like tampering with anyone's drink or anything. Just like keep an eye out, like keep people safe. Number four is like, what I'm gonna suggest is carpooling. So this is like one that's not like immediately obvious, but sometimes people have difficulty getting to events. Not everyone can drive and not everything is like easily public transportation accessible. And it can be like a, you don't, obviously you don't wanna do this with total strangers unless you're like really comfortable with it. But for like people you kinda know or whatever, like doing up a big carpool, also good for the environment obviously you're like less cars on the road but it's like a good way to like make sure everyone can like get to the place and have a good time and you can then you can make sure like someone's a designated driver make sure everyone's safe people can afford stuff better because you don't got to pay for an uber there's like a lot of benefits for it and honestly carpooling can be pretty fun much like with the welcoming new people like you can like have a nice time like talking on your way there and back maybe have like an adventure before or after the club, go get food, stop at the convenience store like way late at night because you're like starving because you ate six hours ago. So yeah, carpooling actually helps quite a bit. And the last one, this isn't applicable for everyone obviously, but one thing that's always appreciated is being able to like lend stuff out if people need it because like a lot of times you try people are trying to run things and all of a sudden oh someone's got a cable missing or they need a microphone stand or hey my amps on the fritz you got something i can like just borrow for the show and being able to like help out with that in an emergency that's really helpful like i know my last set when i was like doing vanguard like so I'm still building up my library, so I do rely a little bit more on the internet than I probably should be. Like, I've got like a little flash drive with like a lot of music on it, but not quite as much as I'd like. So like, I was planning, oh, I hope there's like some decent internet there, and there wasn't. But thankfully someone was there to like give me a hand, said, hey, you can use my phone as a hotspot. So like you can like play people's requests and stuff because kind of like also use a little bit of like internet connection because then I can just immediately get someone's request up and just like play it. So that like really saved my butt that night and really appreciated. And like usually when I'm like seeing what behind the scenes, people almost always end up needing, hey, I need to borrow this or that. So like being able to like lend stuff out is like very helpful. So yeah, these are all like small things you can do, like not having to be like officially on anything or anything but obviously if you want to get even more involved you can do stuff like working door or being a sound person like people like talk about DJing a lot like that's the big thing and that's important but don't underestimate sound people either a good sound person like makes a huge difference on the night and it's like a position that's sometimes needed I know like the big thing everyone really wants to do the most besides maybe like starting their own event is like be the DJ. And that is definitely a good way you can like contribute to things, but it can be like kind of hard getting started into that because let's be real, there's a lot of DJs in the goth scene, but not a lot of spots. And theoretically, if like you're in a scene where like they bring in lots of guest DJs or they got a revolving thing, it'll be like really easy to probably get a DJ spot. But otherwise, if there's only occasional guest spots or something, it might be kind of tough originally getting it. Which is why I'm, it's like sort of an end thing. I'm gonna like kind of explain how I kind of got into DJing and how I like made the connection sort of to be able to do it. So originally actually, my suggestion, people were suggesting me to DJ just at random, which I, I don't think is like normal, something you should expect, but I know once, I know I had like one club, because like I knew someone who was like one of the DJs, and I'm like, oh, I should show you how to DJ. And I'm like, okay, cool, I might look into that. And then another time I'm just at a club, I'm just meeting one of the people running the events. And like, she's already like, oh, you should DJ here sometime. And I'm like, why? okay i'm very flattered i don't know why but apparently i was like seen a lot at shows so i guess like my taste in music was already like 
acknowledged or whatever. But yeah, like being out there, like talking to people will definitely help you get stuff or like kind of like get known enough to where people might consider it. Also, another thing though, is like doing all these other things. If you're like already a lot involved, that's probably gonna help. I mean, don't do these things so you can like get a DJ spot or they'll, they'll book your band or anything. Do these cause like you wanna like help the people and like boost the scene, but it does help, help you get your foot in the door. And I'm gonna be honest too. It's also, it's very easy for people to say, oh, you can DJ or oh, we'll give you a DJ spot, but you might need to be patient. Like I was originally suggested I should DJ, I think in like either 2018 or 2019. And it wasn't until this year where I finally got to because like I said, a lot of people, not a lot of spots. And you kind of gotta be like, be patient with it sometimes. Of course, on, a, in, on top of all this, you do also like need to be able to like get, afford the equipment and like teach yourself and everything. And that can be like a whole other hurdle. I will say like, depending on the kind of style of the night or whatever, it may not be too tough to DJ because with like a lot of electronic events, you got to like do like super smooth mixing or it's like almost like it's all one track. At a lot of goth events, you don't have to do that. So that makes your job a decent amount easier, but you still also then have to like worry about like having a decent enough library and et cetera, because if you've only got like a handful of bands, you're going to like run out of stuff to play pretty quick. Anyway, I'm like kind of going off on a tangent a little bit, but I hope someone found this video helpful at least. I know it's just like a quick one with like a few like updates and a little bit of advice, but yeah, and hopefully it's this isn't like too boring of a video. And I guess I should also mention since I've like started DJing in real life, I am possibly debating on like doing the occasional Twitch DJ stream. I don't want to like get too serious into that because most of the time I'm like pretty busy with other stuff I want to do. But since I had to like buy like two XLR cables that I don't end up really using even at the clubs because it's usually using a different type of cable. But those cables can like help me like hook up and like just go straight into DJing into Twitch. I might as well like take advantage of them and maybe like try and do one, especially for people who can like can't make it out to any of the sets in real life because physical location like not everyone can make it everywhere. If you're like living on the other side of the country or in a different country, you're not gonna like make it to Baltimore or DC to hear something. So I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to, but I might like occasionally try one or something and I might like post it on like my Instagram or like Facebook like page or whatever. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap this video up because I'm sure it's getting a little bit on the long side. So I will see you next time, hopefully with another decent topic.